Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm back with another video where today I'm going to be doing a WordPress for beginners step-by-step -step video guide. And I'm going to go over everything you need to know about how to use WordPress so you'll be able to create any type of website you want, just like the ones you see here. And keep in mind, like I said, this is a beginner's guide. So even if you've never used WordPress before, that's totally fine. I'll be breaking down everything in a really simple way so anyone can understand it. So I'm just going to jump right over to my WordPress dashboard with a brand new website and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add a site title to our website. And to do that, we're going to go over here to Settings, and then we're going to click on General. And then right here is where you're going to put your site title. And then down here is where you're going to put your tagline. And the tagline, like this says here, in a few words, explain what your site is about. So first I'm going to enter my site title. And then after that, I'm going to add my tagline. And so since this is a travel website, I called it one mile at a time. And then I just added this traveling quote here. And then after you guys do that, you can scroll down here and you can click on save changes. Okay, and then after that, we're going to go over here to where it says permalinks. We're just going to click on that. And then what we're going to do here is basically just clean up our URL. So as you guys can see, this looks a little messy here with all the dates. So instead of the date and name, we're just going to put it as post name. That's just going to help clean it up a little bit. Then after that, we can scroll down here and click on save changes. Alright, so now what we're going to do next is add our WordPress theme. And to do that, we're going to come over here to the left where it says Appearance, and then we're going to click on Themes. And this right here is just kind of the default theme that WordPress puts up for you. But what we need to do is go over here to the top and click on this Add New button. And then once we get here, you're going to notice a bunch of different tabs up at the top. You guys can go through all of these. As you can see, 4,066 different themes here. You can always go to latest. There's some even more themes. Favorites. If you guys mark something as favorite, it'll show up here. Then this feature filter. If you guys have a specific layout that you want to go with, you can go to this feature filter and they got a bunch of different things you can select here. Say you guys want something with the right sidebar, you would just select that. And you click apply filters and then it'll show you all those different themes out there with the right sidebar so you guys can just kind of browse through all these and just see if you like any of them or if you'd like to go with the one that is in the example for this website you're just going to go over here to search themes and we're going to look up the theme called power blog and here it is right here and so anytime you want to install a new theme all you do is click on the install button and then after that it's going to be there's going to be a button and you just hit activate and now that theme has been installed and it is now activated and if you guys happen to be watching this wordpress video without actually having wordpress yet you're just checking things out you guys can check out my hosting discount page on my website at this link right here if you need a discount on website hosting. But just so you know, if you do buy through any of those links on that page, I do get a small commission for that, but it's just so I can keep making these videos free for you guys to watch. So if you want to support the channel and get a discount on your hosting, you can check that page out. And like in all my videos, I always recommend either using GoDaddy or Bluehost because they come with a free domain name and they integrate perfectly with WordPress. And I have a ton of videos on my channel that will cover the setup of those hosting providers too that you guys can check out if you need additional help. So now that we've covered the WordPress theme section, I just want to move over to the WordPress plugin section. And I just want to go over a few plugins that I think would be useful to you guys depending on the type of site you're going to make. So to do that, we're going to go over here to the left and we're just going to click on plugins. And then after that, we're going to go up here and click on add new. So now I'm going to go through nine of my favorite WordPress plugins. And after I go through them, if you guys want to find them, all you have to do 
is go over here to the search plugins box and you type the name in and then you'll find it and then after that you click install now and then after that you're going to click the activate button and then once you've done that you'll be able to find it over here in the left sidebar so the first plugin is called ninja forms and basically what this is is a contact form so if you guys want to collect someone's email or name and then you want to market them later this is a perfect plugin to do that with and now the next plugin is called elementor and basically what this is is a website builder and so when you install a wordpress theme this will allow you to just drag and drop everything as you can see right here you'll be able to edit images you'll be able to edit videos and all kinds of stuff like that directly from your home page. And this plugin is really popular. If you scroll down, you'll see it has over 5,000 five star ratings. And now this next plugin is called WooCommerce. So what this one does is if you guys want to sell something on your website or just basically turn your WordPress theme into a business site, this is a great plugin to do that with. And this is also a very popular plugin with over 5 million active installations and then 3,000 positive 5 star ratings. And now this next one here is called Shared Counts. And basically what this does is it allows you to put social media buttons on your website. So that way the users on your page can interact with it and you can show your social shares that each post gets. And now this next one here is called WordFence Security. And what this does is just a free plugin to keep your WordPress site safe. And this plugin is also very popular. I actually use this one myself for my sites. And it's got over 4 million active installations and over 3,000 positive 5 star ratings. So if you guys want to just keep your website safe from, like this says, malicious traffic or anything like that, this is the perfect plugin to do that. Now this next plugin here, this is called Envira Gallery. So if you guys have a bunch of pictures that you want to turn into a photo gallery, this is a perfect plugin to do that with. And then this next plugin here, Yoast SEO, this is probably the most popular one here. And if you guys don't know what SEO stands for, it's Search Engine Optimization and going to help you, like it says here, to rank higher in search engines. This one is also super popular with over 5 million active installations and 25,000 5 star ratings. Like I said, this one's really popular and it's super easy to use. And now this plugin here is called One Click Demo Import. What this is going to do is if we go over here to this WordPress theme here. If you click on Live Demo, what this plugin here is going to do is import all the demo content for specific themes out there. So if you have a certain theme and you want it to look like the example, all you would do is install this plugin right here and then it will import all this content that you see right here. And now this last plugin here is similar to this Ninja Forms plugin. It allows you to create an opt-in form so you can record people's emails and then market them later. And this one's a little more popular than Ninja Forms. You can see it has over 2 million active installations and then 1200 five star ratings. So if you guys want to make an easy sign up form, which is also mobile optimized, this is a great plugin to use. And again, if you guys want to go and find any of these plugins, all you would do is search for it right here, find it, and then click on install now, and then activate after that. And now that we covered the plugin section, I'm just going to go back over here to the dashboard. Now one last thing too I wanted to mention to you about the plugins is that if you don't know how to use a specific plugin, all you have to do is go to YouTube and search the name of that plugin. And there's going to be a ton of videos that are going to come up that will show you exactly how to use it. I just didn't want to spend too much time going over the ins and outs of nine different plugins in this video. But what we're going to do now is create our first post. So what we're going to do is go over here on the left sidebar and click on posts. And this right here is where you'll see all your different posts that you make. And this post right here, this is just a example post that WordPress includes every time you install WordPress on a new site. But what we need to do is come up here to where it says add new and click on that. 
and this is what our blank post is going to look like we have a place for the title and then down here is where we're going to put all the content and right here on the right is going to be the sidebar for our post and if you click this button right here you can make it disappear so if it ever disappears you can click this again and you can show it and then if we scroll down here you'll see all the different things that are on the sidebar here like the permalink settings where we can switch the link we can decide what we want our link to be called and then also our categories which we'll get into we'll create categories for our site and then tags right here this is basically just going to show google and other search engines what our post is about and I'll also get into those. And then if we keep going down, we got our featured image right here. And basically what this is, it's just going to be the main image for this specific post. And then there's also a block section, which we'll get more into in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is create an example post for you guys so you can just see how everything works. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add my title for my first article. And since this is a traveling website, I'm going to name my first article my top five favorite national parks. And then down here, like I said before, is where we're going to add our content. And I have some ready to go already, actually. So what I'm going to do is just paste it in right here. Just very simple text. And now I'm just going to make a couple changes and show you guys a few basic things. I'm going to switch the size of this right here. And I'm going to put this down to H3, heading 3, so it's a little smaller. And then I'm also going to bold it. And then I'm going to go down here and do the same thing to this one. Okay, now I just finished the last one here, and then I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to add a little bit of space between all these right here. So first I'm going to put some space in between this, and this is where we're going to get into the blocks. And if you see these little buttons right here, like this and like this, you'll notice if you just go down and you just put your mouse there, they'll just automatically pop up. And so I'm going to click on this. And what I'm going to search for is called Spacer. And I'm going to click on that. And this is just going to give you some space in between your text. And over here is where you decide how much space you want. So just for this right here, I'm going to put this down to 10 actually. And then we got 10 pixels of space between that and then the actual content. And then I'm going to come down here. And on this one, I'm going to add a little more space. So I'm going to put this one to 25. Okay, as you can see, there's a little bit of a difference there. And do the same thing for this one, 10 here. And 25 here again. And then I'm going to do that for the rest of these ones too. Okay, so I just finished doing that. And another thing I wanted to show you guys too is if you're ever in the middle of a post and you just want to save it but you don't actually want to publish it and put it out all you have to do is come up here and click on save draft and then once you go to that post again it'll all be saved but it won't actually be published until you click the publish button here now the next thing i want to go over is how to put photos in your post and if you guys need any free photos any stock free images rather you can go to pixabay.com or here's another one called pexels.com they have thousands of free stock photos you guys can use all for free and that's actually where i got my images that i'm about to upload to this post right here now there's a few ways we can do this if you go down here and click on this block and then you look up image you'll see right here you can just select an image and you can upload images or you can select them from your media library or you can insert from a URL and once you upload images they're automatically going to be put inside your media library so you could upload them each individually or you could do this which is go over here to media and you can go to your library right here and you can click on add new and you can select all the files that you want to just show up in your media library. And so all you have to do is go to wherever you saved your images, usually in downloads. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these images right here that I'm going to be putting in this post. And I'm just going to click on open. And as you can see right here, all of them are going to be uploaded. And now those are in my media library. So if I go back over here, actually I'm going to click on save draft first. And then I'm going to refresh this page. And I'm going to scroll back down here and click on media library and there's all my pictures right here and so i'm just going to select the image that i want for that and then after that click select and you'll see it will pop up right here and if you click on the image and then scroll down you can do a few different things you can change the size of it by going like this clicking these i'm going to set it to i think i'm going to set it to 75. And if you guys want to describe the image, you can just put it in right here. Like for example, this one, I would just type in Yellowstone. If you go up here, you can also click this and it will make the image rounded. Or you can just keep it default. I'm going to keep it default. Then I'm going to add a little bit of space in between that. Got my image and you can also go here and you can center it. Which I'm going to do right there. And then also, if you guys ever want to make this image clickable, so when people click on it, it will send them to a different link. You just make sure the image is selected and you click on this insert link right here. And then you just paste your URL in right here and then you click on the apply button. And then anytime someone clicks that image, it will take them to whatever link you put that you put in right here. And then also, if you want to write a caption down here, could put in Yellowstone and that will be a caption right under it if you guys want to label it. Now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to add the rest of the images down for these other ones right here. Okay so now I just finished adding in my last image here and I'm going to go back up and what we're going to do now is add our featured image for this post. And this is going to be the same way that we upload any images like these right here. It's the same thing. You just click on this. And then once you have it in your media library, or like I said before, you can just upload it. You just select your image, click set featured image, and that's it. And while you guys are working on your site, if you ever want to see your progress or just check out your post, all you have to do is click on preview and then click on this preview and new tab button and that will show you exactly what your post is going to look like so far. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tag or some tags for this specific post here. And usually what tags are just basically, like I've said earlier in the video, shows uh, search engines what this specific post is about. So for example, this one's called My Top 5 Favorite National Parks. I'm actually going to add that in right there. And then you can, as it says right here, separate with commas or hit the enter key. I'm just going to hit enter and that's going to add that as a tag. So something else you might want to put, like for this one, I might just put in national parks or best national parks. Stuff like that that just basically describes your post here. And I'd recommend probably adding about maybe one to five different tags if you guys want to. Now we're going to add some categories to our website. And basically what this is for is just to categorize different posts that we might be writing about. So maybe in one post I'm talking about travel or the next post I'm talking about food. This way we'd be able to separate them into the respective categories. And if we go over here on our right sidebar, you'll see there's only one category right now. And this is the default one that WordPress puts in and it's the uncategorized category. So what we need to do is click on this add new category button. And this right here is where we're going to add them. So it's going to be different for everybody's website. What I would recommend is just go and check out similar websites to the one that you're trying to create and see what they're doing for their categories. And then we're also going to be using some of these categories here as our menu for the top of our website. So I'm just going to add a few of them. And the first one I'm going to do is destinations. And after you put it in right there, all you have to do is click on add new category. And then there it is right there. 
And now I'm going to add another one and put it as food. And now if you look down here, you'll see a parent category. And basically what that means is if you guys were talking about food in your post, but you wanted to, maybe you wanted to separate it by chicken or beef or anything like that, different types of food, you could go down here where it says parent category after you add your main category and say I typed in chicken right here. If I wanted that to be under this main food category, I'd go under the parent category and then I just select food. And so under the food category would be a separate parent category called chicken. So if I did that, you'll see that right there. So say you were writing about food, but your specific post was about chicken recipes or something like that. You would just go and create this parent category and then you could put it under this specific category. And you can add as many categories as you want, depending on the type of website you're making. So what I'm going to do is just add a few more and then I'll be back. Okay, so I just added the rest of those categories. And now I'm just going to choose which category that I want this specific post here to be under. And that's so I'm going to get rid of all these right here. And I'm just going to keep it under destinations. And you guys can put each post under multiple categories or just a single category. But for this one, I feel like I'm just going to keep it under destinations. And then I'm going to go up here and click on save draft again. Now we pretty much covered most of the stuff on the post section here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some more block category stuff. So if we click on add block right here and you go over here down here to browse all, you're going to notice a bunch of different things here if you scroll down. And I recommend just going through these things and just checking each one of them out because it could be beneficial to your website and it might be a good idea to use it. So we're just going to keep scrolling down and taking a look at some different stuff. This is how you create a button. So if we click on this, and then here's your button right here. You could type in, click here. And then so if you maybe wanted to send somebody to a link, you would just go and select this. And then you would paste your link in right here. And then click on submit. And then again, if this disappears over here, your sidebar, you can click on that. Then you'll notice some different things right here. You can click outline. You can have it fill. If you guys want to change the color settings on it, you can switch the text, switch the background color to blue if you want, or any other color. Get the border radius, switches it up like that. Width settings, if you want it really long. You want to keep it shorter, like that. You can also add your link in right there. Another thing I wanted to show you too is if you highlight your text right here, say you want to change your color of the text or the background. If you go over here to the sidebar, once it's under block, you can click on color settings. You can switch the color of that. That'll change the text to green if you want. Or say you want to keep it that color, but then put a background under it just to highlight it. You guys can do that too. If you want to get rid of it, click clear, clear. That'll bring it back to the original color. You can also click on this little arrow right here and you can click on text color and change that. Or if you want to strike through some text, you can click on that. And now if we go back over to the block settings and click on browse all, we can continue scrolling down here. Check out some more of these. You guys can add social icons in right there. Also, another one here is a YouTube video. If you guys want to embed a YouTube video in your post, it's really simple. All you do is just click on this here and you go and you grab your URL from YouTube and you would just paste it in right here like that and then click on embed. And then right there you have your YouTube video. It'll pop up. You can also do whatever you want. Just click on center, full width, anything like that. And sometimes it's just good to add in some, you know, YouTube videos or anything like that, just to add some extra stuff to your post. And then if we keep scrolling down here, you'll notice there's a few more things. You guys can add a TikTok video if you want. And most of these are really self-explanatory. So if you just click on them, don't be afraid to click on them because for the most part, they're going to be really simple. Like you just add in a link or something else like that, and it's going to make it work. 
Now that should pretty much do it for the block section. And one more small thing I wanted to mention to you guys was if you have some text that you want to be clickable and have it go to a link when somebody clicks it, all you would do is same thing as pretty much linking to anything else. You'd highlight what you want there, click the link, enter your URL here, and then that text right there is now a clickable link. And now I've already went over all the plugin stuff already, but I just wanted to mention too that if you guys are planning on maybe doing anything on Amazon, like selling anything through Amazon through the affiliate program that they have, here's um, a couple of plugins that I recommend you guys checking out. This one's called AAWP. It's just a plugin for Amazon affiliates. And this is another one right here too that you guys can check out called Azon Press. So maybe if you're thinking about doing anything on Amazon, you guys can definitely go check those out. And now that's gonna cover everything for the post section. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on publish and we're gonna actually publish our post. So we're gonna click on publish and then we're gonna click on publish again. And now the post has been published and we click here, view post, we can check it out. So what it's gonna look like. And now we're going to head back to our dashboard. Now the next step we're going to move on to is creating our menu button. So if we go to our home page right here, we will see our first post. Then we'll also see a add menu button. If we click on that, that's if you're using this specific theme. If you're not, you can go over here and go to appearance and click on menus. And that will take you to the same place. And now this right here is where we're going to create our menu. So all we have to do is first give our menu a name and it can be anything you want. Nobody's going to see it besides you. So you could even name it menu one and that would be fine. That's actually what I'm going to call it. And once you give it a name, you can just click on create menu. And then also to make sure under here where it says display location, make sure this primary box is ticked. That's just going to make sure that it shows up here at the top of your site right here. Now we're going to go over here to where it says add menu items and we're going to either add pages, posts, custom links, or categories to our menu. Now this all depends on what you guys want to show up in your menu. But like I said earlier about the categories, that's actually what I'm going to add here first. And if you look down here, you're not going to see any of the categories that we created. But if you go to view all, you'll see all the different categories that we did create. And now I'm just going to go and select the ones that I want to show up in the menu. So I'm going to select this one, these right here, and this one, and this one. Then I'm going to click on Add to Menu. And as you can see right here, all of these are actually main categories. And like I explained before, with the um, food category and the subcategory being chicken, I'm actually going to need to take this. If I want this category to be a subcategory to this one, I'm just going to take this, select it, hold it, and then move it over to the side. If you can see the box kind of changes right there, if I put it down there, it's now a sub item. And then if you guys want to rearrange any of these, like maybe you want this one to be up here, you can go through and just switch them up in whatever order that these are in. For example, this destinations one, this category is going to be the first category in the menu. And then this is going to be number two, three, and so on. And if you guys want to say you wanted to create a link that just links out to your home page, so you have a, a home button right here, all you would have to do is paste your website link right here. So for example, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to paste that right there. And I'm going to call this home and I'm going to click add to menu. And then we now have a home button right here that I'm actually going to put that first. And then also too, if you guys wanted to maybe create a contact page or an about me page or anything like that, this is where you would find it. All you would do is go up here to pages. And pages are just like posts. They're pretty much the same thing. They look exactly the same. 
So all you would do is, say for example, you wanted to make a contact page, you could just put contact us. And then you could even go on Google and figure out how to write a good contact page and then write your contact info down here. And then once you publish that page, you would just come back here and then refresh this and that page would show up right here. And then you would just add that to the menu right here. And then so once you have everything in the order that you want it, all you would do is come down here where it says save menu. And like I said, make sure this display location this primary is selected. You just click on save menu. And now our menu has been saved. So if we go here to our page, we refresh it. You'll notice here's all our different menu items. And if you look under food, there's a subcategory right there. And that's how easy it is to create a menu. Okay, so now that we've completed the menu, I just want to go back over to the post section real quick and explain a few more things. I have actually went and added a few more posts, as you can see. This is kind of giving you an idea of what it'll look like when you get some more posts up. But what I wanted to explain is if you guys ever want to get rid of any of these, like for example, this um, example post right here that WordPress automatically puts in, you can just go up to here and if you want to get rid of it, you can click move to trash and then click apply. And it's not actually deleted yet. If you go here in the trash, it's still there. And if you want to completely delete it, you can just select it and then click delete permanently. And also too, when you have all your content up like this, and maybe you're thinking about switching your theme, you don't have to worry about any of your content ever getting deleted. If you decide to switch your theme and install a different one and then activate it and just to see how it looks, all your content will still stay there and stay the same. So if you guys want to go through and just try out a bunch of different themes, you can and you don't have to worry about ever losing any of your content. So now I'm back over here at the dashboard and the next thing we're going to go over is how to edit this sidebar right here. It's right here and you can see there's a bunch of different stuff and the way you do that is once you're at your dashboard you go over here to the side and you go to appearance you go down here and you click on widgets and this right here as you can see it says primary sidebar this is where you're going to control everything that's on your sidebar and kind of like the menu that we created earlier whatever one is first for example, like if I put the search back up here or I put this recent post back up here, that's going to be the first one that shows up here. Like if I refresh it, now the recent posts are there before the search box. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove a few of these things. I'm going to remove this archives here and I'm also going to remove this meta box right here too. So I'm going to go back over here and where it says archives i'm just going to come down here and click delete and same thing with the meta i'm going to delete that too i'm going to put the search box back up here and then over here is a bunch of different widgets that you guys can activate so say you wanted to add a image on the sidebar but you want to make it so when people click on it it actually takes them to a certain link well, all you would have to do is grab the image here like this and then just put it right there. And then you would click on add your image and then you would just select your image. Like I said, you guys can just upload it to your um, media library by going here and then adding it. And then once you go down here to where it says link, you would just add your link in and you can click on save. Now if we go here, and we click on one of our posts and we scroll down then that picture or image is right there and if we click on it it'll take you to that exact link that you set up right there now one last thing too before i wrap this video up if you guys are looking for an additional way to customize your theme here you can go up here to where it says customize and you can click on that and then depending on the theme that you have, it's going to have a bunch of different boxes here on the left. And you guys can go through and check them out. And they're basically just more ways to customize your site. 
Like if you guys wanted to add a logo or edit your site title and tagline, you can also do it right there. Or say you wanted to come over here and get rid of this search button. That would get rid of that search. Or if you guys wanted to switch up the color scheme of anything, you can go down here to advanced settings and there's a color section where you can switch all these to different colors. And if you wanted to ever switch them back, you can click that default button right there. You can also add a background image so it's not just a color. And if you guys do decide to edit anything right here, just make sure you go up here and click on publish to save all your changes before you close it. And I've actually already talked about this plugin right here called Elementor. But again, if you guys are picking a more complicated theme to go with, this is a really great free plugin that you guys can use to build your website. And as I said too earlier before in the video, if you guys don't know how to use it, all you have to do is go and look up Elementor on YouTube. And there's a ton of videos that will cover it. And that same thing goes too for the themes. If you guys don't know how to use a theme or set up a certain theme, all you have to do is go and look up the name of the theme on YouTube and there's probably a ton of videos covering it. So I think that's actually going to do it for this video. I think I pretty much covered everything that I need to cover for WordPress. And now you guys should be able to go and take all this knowledge and apply it and create your own website. And again, if you guys get caught up in anything, you can go and just YouTube any of this stuff. Or if you have a question or a comment, for me, you can just leave it down below this video in the comment section. And I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. And so if you guys have enjoyed this video and found it useful, give it a like or share it with a friend. So go out there and just start adding content to your website and just do a little bit of it at a time. And apply everything that you learned in this video to your own website and your own theme and the plugins and all that stuff. And you guys will be on your way. So thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.